For me, talking about spirituality and religion, it frankly gives me anxiety. Um, and it's not to say that I am afraid to talk about it. It's more I I struggle with the fear of judgment as it relates to my belief system. And I think a lot of that stems from my childhood and just having to defend my ideologies from a very young age but talking about spirituality was one of the things that was requested and I feel like for everyone especially people that consider themselves spiritual people there's different interpretations to being spiritual and what someone you know deems to be their spiritual practice may not necessarily align with how someone else looks at their spiritual practice you know some people are really into crystals and psychics and things like that you know others are really into just meditation some people you know use psychedelics as a tool to explore their spirituality some people pray you know and some people go to do more conventional paths um to you know deal with their belief system whether that be in the traditional temple or church-like context uh, and so for me talking about spirituality and religion is, is touchy because one it's one thing that's been a part of our human culture from the dawn of humanity you know ever since we existed we've always wanted to know the answers to the questions that plague us all you know why are we here what's the point of this like what it why do we deal with this life that not only has all of these great things but also can be so painful and so difficult to move through and just understanding our purpose and our passions and what happens to us when we die and dealing with the pains all associated with that and just understanding the world that we're in and trying to have some control in a world that seems to be nothing but pure chaos there's so many ways to look at religion because for all of us ultimately it helps us feel grounded in why we're here it gives us a launch pad from which to make sense of the world to understand our feelings and to move through the world and how to relate to other people and some people use ideologies as a means to manipulate and others use it as a means to really navigate that curiosity within all of us, which is to, again, understand just why we are here and why we are alive and why we exist. And for me, I think like anyone else, that's why I consider myself a spiritual person. I think like any human, I too want to answer some of these questions and understand, you know, why we're here because even from the day that i was born i have always always been curious about how the world works and for me religion and spirituality is just one facet of that and for me science is another facet of that too it tries to make sense of everything that we know uh, but using methods that can be fact-checked not just necessarily scriptures that might be metaphorical or have you know secret meanings or what have you but yeah today i'm going to talk about spirituality and you know this is my truth i'm really just trying to speak the truth as i know it and again like a lot of my beliefs are largely influenced from my upbringing largely influenced by the different cultures that i was exposed to as a child and just being raised in a you know interracial marriage i think a lot of that has to also impact just the way that i look at the world because when i was born my parents never made me choose uh to believe one religion over the other so i just want to preface this by kind of i guess yeah giving you a bit of background on my religious upbringing because i wouldn't say i necessarily had a spiritual upbringing but i did have a more conventional religious upbringing in the sense that my mom's side of the family uh is very much methodist uh like yeah we they follow the methodist version of christianity and my dad's side of the family are hindus and so they both you know were pretty much 
trained or schooled in in their you know belief system like both of my grandparents on both sides of my family were pretty much of the same religious faith and it was interesting for my parents having to navigate how do they you know form a union where both of their ideologies are actually quite different from one another on one hand you have a religion that's like the most popular monotheistic you know faith in the world and the other is one that adopts much more different uh mystical ideologies related to the formation of the universe and showcases a breath of gods that occupy both the feminine and the masculine energy and just talks about different ideas you know with death and understanding our place in the universe compared to monotheistic religions like christianity and me being born in the middle my parents never wanted to say that one was right or one was wrong i don't think either of them really knew for themselves which one was right or wrong and i don't think anybody does which is why we have so many different interpretations of why we're here but because of that they they really felt like exposing me equally to both religions and so i was baptized twice you know and so i would always say like i was double blessed because i was baptized twice i was baptized into the methodist faith and i was also baptized into the hindu faith which is done through shaving of your head as a kid and like there's a more structured ceremony than that but i honestly don't really know too much about it so i'm not gonna try and butcher it and you know despite being you know when i was a kid i i lived on an island that was predominantly a uh, christian based uh religion uh though the island is pretty diverse and it has people of all different religious groups and races the main religious ideology was that of christians like the majority of the caribbean is very much a christian dominated uh area in terms of like what is the most popular religion and so typically a lot of the cultural norms are tied to religious norms so you know there is a celebration of christmas and easter and we have carnivals that you know mark the end of lent and all, all of these different things that relate primarily to christian ideas and as a kid you know being mixed and you know of two different races i really just wanted to fit in and so as much as my parents exposed me to both religions i often really just tried to stay in the middle and i i just tried to not really talk too much about my religious beliefs because i would always have to defend my opinions because i especially when i was a kid i really really took to the indian um perspective of multiple gods to do different things and when i was a kid I would have to debate that and you know it's kind of a hard thing i think for a kid to have to back up why they believe what they believe but i think it was good for me because it forced me to really have to understand why did i in fact believe what i believed and i think even though i was exposed to two religions and indoctrinated into two religions i wouldn't say my family was very religious as much as i do have experiences having gone to church or having gone to satsang which is the indian equivalency to church uh i didn't really go that often to either um like it's not like we went if we were like at every sunday or every weekend uh in attendance or anything like that but my my parents definitely made sure that i was aware of both of them i understood what they both were teaching and essentially they left it up to me to decide what i wanted to believe and as a you know as just a human on this earth like i think it is perfectly natural to want to understand the world around you you know why you see what you see why you feel what you feel um and just understanding the essence of life and consciousness i think that it, it's just like an easy thing to be curious about you know and to me it seems very natural for humans to want to look up at the stars and to come up with patterns and to try and interpret you know how what is going on up there and how does that relate to our lives you know because i think the ego at least for all of us you know makes our lives centered around ourselves and so it's easy for us to convince ourselves of things if 
we have just the slightest bit of evidence that points in that favor. And when I was a kid, as much as I admired both of my, you know, religious ideologies, to me, they were still just ideologies. You know, they were stories about interesting things. But even as a kid, I could already see through them and, you know, see like, okay, this is a story. Like, this isn't what really happened. Even though, you know, when I was learning about history and I was learning about science, obviously our history today and our history is, you know, a civilization is largely tied to religious history as well and if you look at a lot of our socio-political development is it's tied to wars that were fought based on religion and as much as we want to say that there's a separation of church and state it's that line is very much you know blurred and it's i think it's hard for people to move around in the world without having their religion or their belief system influence how they move through the world and how they react to things in the world and i think that's why it's so hard for people to have a separation of church and state it's because at the end of the day like your belief system guides a lot of your ethical and moral decision making and it's hard to do that if you you know if your if your belief system is tied to religion it's hard to look at things from a potentially unskewed perspective like especially on topics like abortion and stuff like that you know same-sex marriage and the such but anyways like I, I as I was in school you know I was learning a lot about history I was learning about the role religion played in society and you know how terrible the church was uh, and all the atrocities that the Vatican and the church had done um, on many many communities in the name of acquiring assets for God and it was interesting to see how humans were rebellious against religion throughout many points in history, you know, especially like the run during the Renaissance. Um, and when the Protestant movement um, began, when the Lutheran movement began, you know, when uh, religious groups were persecuted in Europe. And so that's what, that's a, one of the driving factors for why immigrants came to the United States back, back in the day. And just even understanding how different philosophies from Taoism to Confucianism to understanding how Buddhism arose, how Hinduism arose, and what was the founding principles behind those faiths. To me, even just learning about that through history was very fascinating. And it made me very appreciative of how humans try to make sense of the world around them and it seems like a lot of the questions that i were asking were questions that were asked by the greatest minds you know years and years ago you know plato and socrates were asking these very questions about why are we here and what is the role of our existence you know newton were asking these questions as they were studying the universe and trying to understand the physics the underlying mechanics behind the universe that we see and it's interesting because throughout all of this time i feel like the progression of science is really just the progression of trying to understand the world around us which is pretty much what religion is was trying to do for human civilization but science was able to offer us more than i think what religion was able to offer us because science gave us methods that we could actually go and validate and the the goal of science was to constantly try to prove itself wrong which was something that religion wasn't really doing you know religion was more of this is what my book says and you kind of got to believe it all the way or you're not really you know as loyal as you say you are you don't really have the faith whereas science was like here are what i here's what i think is going on this is i will create an experiment to test any ideas that can break my idea to see that my idea is actually wrong and whatever sticks i'm gonna use that to potentially try to explain what is going on in the world and science's goal is actually to you know destroy itself it's to figure out you know it's to make its make its own theories obsolete in the pursuit of better theories and so when i was young i i really really loved science and mathematics because i felt like it was finally giving me on some level a clear articulation as to why the world 
was the way that it was why did it exist and how did i manifest in that journey in that evolution of life in the universe but even still you know i i didn't know a lot as to why we were here i i still wouldn't even consider myself a spiritual person i feel like at that point i would say like high school i still was a kid you know i wasn't really thinking about being super religious i was just trying to fit in you know i was just trying to be a normal kid you know I wasn't trying to deal with that judgment that I experienced in my younger years and so I pretty much just didn't really talk about religion you know I I, as much as it fascinated me to learn about history and learn about ancient civilizations unless it was something related to a project I wasn't really going to talk or have conversations about religion because to me It was just a very touchy subject and I just knew that people didn't understand how I looked at the world. And so there was no point to me in engaging in a topic that was only going to leave me feeling rejected pretty much. And so I just stopped talking about religion to the point where people would think that I was actually an atheist uh, because I am a huge fan of science. I talk about that and people would just assume well if she you know believes in the big bang if she believes in evolution she must not believe that there is a god of any kind and that's actually far from the truth it's i don't it's not to say that i don't believe in god i i believe in a uh essence or force that um per permeates the entire universe and to me that the the thing that the energy that flows through the universe that to me is what i deem to be god because to me god is the universe you know it's what created the universe um and to me the thing that created the universe was energy and but we can get all we'll get we'll get into all of that but so essentially at that point you know i wasn't really talking much about religion i wouldn't consider myself spiritual i didn't like meditate or do yoga like i had a weird affinity for crystals like i would collect a ton of rocks and pretty crystals and just have them in my room for fun but i definitely didn't really do much with like psychics or i like i obviously i'm into like my zodiac sign but other than taurus being stubborn there's really no other uh characteristics that i I don't really read the horoscopes because i feel like they're too general and broad and again as someone that has like a very analytical mind like for me it's hard for me to always believe stuff because i'm very skeptical like i very much want i try to poke holes in things like my mind is always trying to see through the ruse and so it's it's hard for me or at least then it was hard for me to take things like psych being psych a psychic or clairvoyance seriously because i was like are you kidding me you know like that's a joke like that that's not real like there's no way they would know that stuff about you for real and it's nothing but pure coincidence or they're like reading your body language that's pretty much the perspective that i had and still you know having been someone that is you know baptized into two religions i still for me had a very you know moral ethical code by which i move throughout the world like for me you know religion kind of gives you this archetype between good versus evil and it kind of gives you a foundation from which to choose the direction of your life like are you going to go towards good and actually try to be a vehicle of improvement despite the fact that life in and of itself has zero meaning and you know is nothing can be looked at as just continual suffering until the day you die um or you could look at it as despite all of that you still look at it for all the great that it does bring you the happiness the joy the memories the ability to experience things and feel pleasure and excitement um and using that and trying to use that in the the motivation that love brings you when you're unconditionally and authentically yourself and you're being of service to others using that energy and that's more relating to like the god good archetype or just seeing life for the bleakness that it can be and using that fuel to manipulate things to kind of just get what you want but not really caring about anything because at the end of the day it doesn't matter and 
at that point for me like most people tend to lean i think towards let's try to make this a happy life and not suffer but unfortunately there are folks that i think teeter the the other way uh and you know for me spirituality was really more of a personal quest to try to understand why the hell am i even here like honestly like at the end of the day that's really what it's about it's it's a a selfish thought you know like why am i here and why do i matter and why does me being on this earth even make a difference you know like i think that's where everyone's spirituality can kind of begin because we each have a a unique experience you know one thing that's unique about our existence is that we each have our own ego our own identity in which we have and it's uniquely our own you know like there's no one else that can be you and with that comes your you have your own limitations your own strengths your own curiosities things that you're naturally you align with but there's a lot that distracts you from that and for me understanding and having a spiritual journey is really about how do you get yourself on a path where you're pretty much just constantly improving yourself but you're doing it in a way in which you're not only learning about who you are and what takes you off and what gets under your skin but you're also learning about as you do that inner work you're learning about the world around you and the people around you and you're recognizing you're becoming aware of the different states of consciousness that occupy your being and that's why i love spirituality but for me i didn't really get into exploring that and really trying to nail down like what is it is it that i'm trying to learn what is it that i'm really trying to understand about the world until I got to college and when I got to college it's not to say that oh you know you're in college and that's like your crazy experimental phase or whatever the hell not it's more of like when I was in college I felt like I was in a different uh, environment that one was very very foreign to what I was used to uh, living in the Caribbean where it's just people have a completely different mindset um, and a different relationship to different ideologies i think uh than like in the states where i also think it's very much predominantly a christian based country but it was interesting because i i one i was always I was learning a lot. I was learning a lot, not just about how the world works from like a physics point of view, but I was also learning things in different courses that were kind of like creating patterns in in my you know awareness or at least like i was starting to have questions that were a little bit different than what i had previously asked and i was from this point i pretty much looked at the world like god to me at least was a multi it was a formless being that essentially could occupy many different forms to bring about um, information to humans as is necessary so like different uh religious figures and different you know popular religions to me are just different manifestations of god in the universe that the different archetypes for different religions each of them are a different manifestation of god that i felt or not that i felt but that the universe felt would be the best form to bring about the message that humanity needed to hear at the time so for christians that's jesus you know that is the manifestation of god that came to spread the word for you know uh, muslims that might be allah you know for hindus that could be shiva or ganesh or whomever for the buddhists that was siddhartha and so there's just different archetypes that to me were just different manifestations of the same god so for me at least that's how i was able to rationalize the connection between the singular all-powerful god to how do you explain the manifestation of multiple gods and for me they were one and the same they were just different masks to the same figure and 
the thing that was ultimately connecting them all was energy. They all occupied the same energy, which is the energy that occupies all of us. It's the energy that flows throughout the entire universe. It gives you life. It gives me life. It allows me to breathe. It allows me to perceive the world around me it is the energy that creates the conscious experience from which i perceive the world and interact with the world and to me that energy that is the energy that creates everything that is the energy from which manifestation occurs that is the energy that literally creates creation and it is the same energy from which we shall return and some people call this source i personally refer to it as just the universe and that's an another synonym for the word god now i know like for folks that follow the you know monotheistic religion that is just blasphemy (laughs) you know what i'm saying is blasphemy and you don't look at god as a being of energy you look at it as a male figure um but to me it, it it's very much of the human ego to assume that god was a human i think as much as I think that's cute i think that's just the limitations of the human ideology to want to create a figure in his own image when i think the universe is something that's much grander like our like god would be much grander than anything we could perceive because god created us and everything around us and so god would be, be- like greater than that and so why would he or she be in our image when we are in the image of it you know and so yeah and you know when i was in college i i because i was starting to really wonder and understand like this energy this you know universal energy that flows through everything i really wanted to understand it better because i feel like there's a lot of uh you know a vernacular out there that's just like oh the energy the energy feel the energy you know feel it um and for me that can just like as the, as the skeptic in me cringes you know when i hear stuff that makes spirituality sound very woo woo and it's like at the end of the day no matter what you say it's going to sound woo woo because science is still catching up you know to understanding the world as it is like science is only is is a new new thing in the you know history of the universe and so i think it's silly for humans to think that we've got it all figured out i think there's a lot that we don't know and so spirituality and religion occupies this world of the unknown trying to make sense of it um while science is more of a uh study of the physical um and trying to understand the world of the physical or at least physics is studying you know the physical world but there's a lot that our technology which i think is largely limited by our own perception um makes us enable to completely understand a lot of the things that people that are clairvoyant or that are really you know into the spiritual way of looking at things um could explain their experiences and i think that's why it can sometimes be hard and why it's hard for me to talk about it because as someone that is an engineer that does look at the physical and love shit in black and white i can sometimes get anxious when i talk about things that are more esoteric or woo woo or mystical because i have a fear of judgment and so like i i worry that me talking about it can get misconstrued or misinterpreted and therefore be just rejected essentially but i'm going to try my best to kind of explain um at least how i look at energy or and how i look at manifesting things and how i look at just the way that the world actually exists and a lot of that creates for me at least the foundation of my belief system that is in alignment with how i move through the world from an ethical and moral perspective and for me when i look at life when i think about how all things exist i look at the matter in the world you know i feel like physics at least was able to give us some understanding of the physical realm in the sense that everything that i mean and we learned this you know in like high school science middle school science i believe but 
everything around us you know solids liquids gases they all contain atoms they all contain these vibrating particles that when in close connection um, can form compounds that can form all sorts of complex molecules that create tissues that can create organ systems that creates living things or also can be in structures where it creates inanimate objects and some of these arrangements can in certain levels of abstraction create conscious experiences but at the end of the day all things everything in the world from the air that my hand feels as it moves through space through the beating of my heart is all built up of these subatomic particles that when you actually look at them and you see, okay, so what is this stuff that I'm made up of? Like at my fundamental core, it's space. It's nothingness. It's literally nothingness. Like it's space. And that can seem like, just like it doesn't make any sense because it's like how can something that I perceive to be solid be actually made up of things that don't, have mass but yet they do occupy mass and i can interact with them um, in the physical world and to me it's really really interesting because currently physics does not have a way of relating the quantum mechanical world and like quantum mechanics with gravity and that's one of the things that einstein was working on um but was unable to solve and it's 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 just like interesting because it goes to show you that even our fundamental understandings of the universe aren't perfect and in fact there's a lot that we still don't know Um, And the things that we do know are really freaking weird. And despite the fact that we are all made up of subatomic particles that are all vibrating in close proximity to one another, we don't feel that, nor do we think about that when we move through the world. We don't look at the world from a quantum mechanics perspective. You know, we look at the world from a classical Newtonian perspective. And as much as classic you know newton's laws like help us move through the world and make predictions around motion and gravity and you know a lot of it makes sense there's still a lot that we don't understand and how the quantum mechanical world interplays with this classic newtonian way of looking at the world and it's interesting because we as engineers we use technology that takes advantage of a lot of technology that uses frequency and parts of the electromagnetic spectrum that humans cannot even see to do really interesting things and it's like almost magical in a sense how we're able to send data wirelessly and yet we don't look at the body waves that humans emit as you know beacons of information for our environment we don't look at you know the ability of humans to detect and have this gut instinct and detect you know differences energy uh we don't study that we don't really have a good way of understanding why we feel these weird little intuitive spidey senses and we also don't even understand our own consciousness you know the abstraction that allows us to each have an ego and a personality and to have memories and to learn things and to be able to have belief systems and then to also be able to use our senses to communicate and engage with the world and therefore learn from the world is incredible and For me, spirituality is trying to understand how does our conscious experience relate to this physical world and understanding what does it mean for me when I'm no longer having this form of a conscious experience? What actually happens to my essence, you know, my state of being? Because to me, life is all about being. And I think the whole reason you're alive is essentially to be. But again, we don't, in at least our current understanding of how the world works, really use that as part of our philosophy with how we relate to one another and how we find purpose in the world. You know, for a lot of us, it's all about productivity, not necessarily about growing and becoming more enlightened um, and attaining, you know, 
nirvana or being able to harness your solar plexus and generate a solar body you know after death like we don't really focus on cultivating our emotional intelligence or even cultivating how we energize our bodies as tools and vehicles to have a spiritual experience we don't really talk about that and to me it's really really a shame because i think there's a lot to be explored with our dying with our biology that we don't really understand Uh, and like for example what i mean by that is there are folks out there for example wim hof who are able to do and achieve incredibly unique um, states of consciousness just using their breathing technique Like there are folks out there that can achieve a high as strong as taking a hit of heroin, doing nothing but breathing. Like how? Like that doesn't even make sense. Like how does that even work? And there's this whole, there's a whole study related to the connection between the body and the mind. And there's a lot of literature out there about spontaneous medical regeneration where doctors give people ridiculously short timelines to live and not only do these patients surpass those timelines they're actually able to regain functionality in you know systems that were significantly damaged like they're not they're paralyzed and then they're able to start walking again and a lot of that has to do with this body mind connection but there's not enough literature or science out there to really understand what is going on you know what is exactly the placebo effect doing to your body circuitry that your belief system is somehow able to manifest this state in reality and to me that is what's interesting like i am really really fascinated by how our conscious experience manifests itself in the world and why we are able to have these different states of consciousness and is all the states of consciousness that we know of today really all that there is for humans because there's a lot that we don't know about ourselves even to understand how our brain works and to understand the role that our pituitary gland has in our spiritual journey and understanding the role that our current societal you know infrastructures have in our biology like the role that pollution is having in our ability to sense you know our intuition i'm really really curious about, about that stuff and for me like i really started to explore these topics in college because i was really interested in not only how people got sick and how illness presents itself in the body but i was really also interested in just understanding and trying to figure out my fears around death and understanding like why am i so afraid of it and why why is there this just huge shadow you know around this topic that is not typically discussed often and for me like knowing myself as someone that does get really emotionally attached to people understanding my feelings so that i can better respond to different stress scenarios was really really important to me because as an engineer i was already getting stressed the hell out by all the hard classes that i was taking and i needed a method to cope with that and up until that point like Again, like I had seen my aunt meditate, you know, when I was a kid, I had seen her do it. It's not like it was foreign to me, but it wasn't something that I had ever taken seriously. Like up until that point, I pretty much just thought that shit was dumb and was a joke. You know, I was just like, I don't know why sitting and breathing is really going to make much of a difference, but I guess we'll give it a try. And I was really, again, hella skeptical, did not think I was like, yeah, this is just, you know, Uh, people do this shit i don't know why but i actually did it you know with the intention because other people were saying that it actually was able to bring them some sort of mental calm and if you know me like my brain doesn't shut the fuck up so i needed a way to kind of give myself space to just be because up until that point i was pretty much just go 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 and that's cool and all but it's really not good for you and i i don't like feeling like i'm in a state where i'm gonna burn myself out because i know that's not not sustainable and i'm not having practices that are in alignment with the 
highest version of self that I wish to attain. And it's crazy because even when I was a kid, I always knew that there was this highest version of me that I've always wanted to be. And so as much as I didn't necessarily have like a clear spiritual practice I think even since I was a kid I've always been manifesting my future like I kid you not like there's stuff that I recall that I used to think about when I was a lot younger about things that I wanted in my life today and the fact that I have them today is like holy shit like how the hell did I actually end up doing that um but I think it's just I always knew I wanted to be this better version of me and trying meditation was like one way to try to get there and I knew you know I just had to be open to it and to trying it and I had read all of these you know books on the benefits of meditation I knew why it was good I knew why people were doing it I had just never actually done it myself and so I was taking this class at Michigan um it's like a for people that are at michigan it's jazz like 450 and it's with martha she's a fantastic professor and essentially the class is you sat there for an hour we would read passages out of a book by Thich Nhat khan um peace with every step and we would pretty much discuss the book and meditate from anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes and usually she would kind of just keep us on track you know so she would give us instructions on what to do if your mind wasn't able to stay quiet if you had a lot of mental chatter um we would try different forms of meditation from using just like your breath to maybe having a seed sound to having counting your breaths to doing a laying down meditation versus seated versus walking around, uh, different things like that to really find what was the practice that most resonated with you. And at first, I think like everyone, I struggled. I struggled a lot to get my mind to quiet down because for me, I'm always thinking about the future. I'm always thinking about what's next. What do I need to do? What goals do I need to accomplish? How am I going to get there? What do I need to eat for dinner? What do I need to prep? oh shit, I hadn't gone to the gym yet, blah, 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 or I have this assignment due, or this email has to be sent, or blah, blah, blah. And so my brain is just constantly, constantly going. And it took me a while before I was able to just, but then you know what, what I actually, I used to get really mad, to be honest, I would get really frustrated because I was like, well, wouldn't your brain, like brain, would you just shut up? Like, just shut up, like just shush. Like, why can't you just shut up for five minutes? Just let me breathe for five minutes. And I realized like, instead of getting mad at myself, what I had to do was just look at the thought as it came in, recognize it as, oh, here's a thought. Here is me having a thought and just be like, cool. Thanks for that thought. Thank you for that reminder brain. And I appreciate you for reminding me that, but we're going to, we're, we're trying to meditate right now. And so we're going to, we're going to put a pin in that. We're going to come back to that later. Okay. And then I would go back to my breath. And every time I had a thought, I kind of would do the same little thing. I'd be like, okay, that's a thought. I see it. Coolio. I'm going to go back to breathing now. And eventually it just got to a point where my brain would stop talking. And in that space, it was just black. I'll be honest. Like my eyes were closed. You know, you just see behind your eyelids. It's black. It's not interesting. And you just sit there and you start to think about how you feel. And usually it's my back hurts. And why aren't we done yet? And eventually you try something else. Maybe you lay down for a bit so your back stops hurting or you realize you have to go to the gym and make your back stronger. And it got to a point where I was getting good at just sitting there and, you know, just breathing and focusing on my breath and focusing on the sensation of air going in through my nostrils and up into my brain and going down through my body. And I would think about each breath as though I was oxygenating my entire body all the way down to my toes and I would try to feel the air moving through my nose all the way down to my toes holding the breath 
knowing them in that moment my body was exchanging you know gases from oxygen to co2 to give my body what it needed to take out all of the trash that it needed so that when i did that exhale it would all let go and i would also think about how my body expanded when i took in a breath and how it contracted when i took when i exhaled and thinking about the flow of the breath similarly to the flow of life and again like as i started to do that you notice certain things about your body you notice where energy kind of flows and before i knew it i would start to feel like actually energy flowing in my body like i kid you not i don't know if this is something everybody experiences but it's definitely something that i experience and now it's like anytime i get into a meditative state i can feel this uh pressure or presence of energy with me but essentially it always starts in like my third eye in my crown and i usually feel it as just like this weird tickle but it like moves and it's like i can feel it almost like a a field of some kind or like a like as, as though someone was like twirling like a ribbon, but it was like in my like field. I don't even know how to explain it. It was just like a movement of energy and I can feel like I could feel it clear as day. And it I could feel it so much that I had to ask like, what the fuck was that? Because to me as a skeptic, I was like, this doesn't even make any sense. Like what the hell? Like how does that even, what? Like I don't know how to explain what I'm feeling right now. And so as someone that wants to understand the world i wanted to know what the fuck i was feeling and my yoga teacher told me oh that's prana which is the sanskrit word for energy and my brain was at this point i had never really relate like i had never felt the chakras that everybody was talking about and frankly like as much as i i love the idea of chakras like i had never really experienced it i had never really seen people's auras or anything like that i had never like as much as i could feel people's presence like i could sense good energy kind of versus people who had it out for you uh i could not necessarily i i didn't really feel the energy like i as much as i knew that it was there and it was flowing through the universe i had never felt it for myself and this moment changed that like i had definitive proof that i had felt it and it was interesting because one i was not the only person that had felt this and it was actually you know nice to know that i wasn't like going crazy or anything like that um but i was really it got me really interested in understanding better like energy and how it flows through the body and understanding just like how matter and energy relates to them to each other and that's when i realized like the connections between my physics classes and these more open-ended consciousness exploring philosophical classes because i started to see you know what einstein was talking about when he meant you know e equals mc squared is essentially there is a formula that relates energy to matter you know and that you can get matter without energy and a lot of it to me was just like mind-blowing because for the first time i was understanding like we had physical laws that tried to explain the things that we were talking about in my more philosophical classes and there were many there are many different cultures throughout history across the world that have a lot of similar symbolism um that represents a lot of these ideas relating to the creation of the universe and this was really really interesting to me because now i was tying in my interests for history for science and for religion all to try to understand um how the world manifested itself because i knew at a, at this point that the world that i saw was not the world as it was and in fact the world that i was seeing was a reconstruction that my consciousness generated and projected around me of the world similar to a dreamscape but this one was much much better um in the sense that 
in a dream you somehow have the ability to really experiment uh with your character or your ego or your person uh but in this reality it was very very much concrete who my identity was and my ego was very much in control um and it did not want to let go of control of that and i think for a lot of people our egos are what we know best because it is our identity it's what we're most familiar with in this birth you know that we this this life that we occupy and so it's very hard to sometimes see through the ego when you start to read and you learn about how have other great minds tried to look at this and try to articulate and explore this and explore consciousness, there are actually people that have tried to do it. And when you read about their experiences and what they were able to learn about the world, it's actually really fascinating. It was interesting to see what other great minds in this space were thinking about and it was interesting to see how other civilizations uh tried to interpret the origins of the universe and one of the interesting books that i read uh which was is called cosmic serpent i definitely recommend it i think it's very very fascinating um and it's about this explorer's journey through the amazon talking to medicine men or shamans in the amazon forest talking about what they experienced when they went under traditional medicinal um, ritual, like religious ceremonies, typically using plants like ayahuasca essentially to have these abilities to communicate with um, mama ayahuasca or essentially with the spirit, uh, mom, the mother spirit or the mother serpent, um, which is the cosmic serpent that created the universe. And It's interesting because in this book, it talks a lot about the symbolism as it relates to the serpent. And in many different faiths, there is some depiction of a serpent in those faiths from Egypt. If you look at Egypt hieroglyphics to even if you look at um, etchings that were found in very, very old uh, archaeological sites like Gobleki. Gobekli Tepe and all sorts of different um, imagery even in Christianity we have the representation of the serpent in Hinduism you have the representation of the serpent if you go to Buddhist temples you'll see the stairways up to the temples are usually um, lined with gigantic serpents and all of these serpents essentially show the ascension to heaven or ascension to the source realm or alternate dimensions or alternate states of consciousness that are different from what we experience on the ground level here at earth and different religions um, have different ways of accessing that altered state of consciousness in hinduism there's a and you know buddhism there's a lot of breathing technique and a lot of uh practice that goes into developing great breathing techniques that allow you to access these altered states of consciousness Um, But there are, you know, other avenues that can also get you there without necessarily having to do all of that rigorous training um, and mastery to, to be able to induce those states. And a lot of, you know, Harvard scientists were studying this back in like the 70s, 60s, 80s in that period. Uh, But it was very, very controversial because at this time, you know, psychedelics, even to this day, have a very, very negative reputation you know they're looked at as like this super addictive just very very mind altering um will make you lose your shit substances but in fact science today is showing there's actually a lot of not only therapeutic benefits of undergoing these different states of consciousness but they're actually really good for people that are dealing with mental illness like depression and anxiety um and the such but anywho Essentially, at this time, I was really, really interested in understanding the connections between all of these different cultures and their interpretations of what happens. You know, what is what is the truth behind the 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 manifestation of the universe? And what was interesting was these shamans in the you know Amazon forest all, even though they were in different tribal groups. Um, all had the exact same experience when they participated in this uh, traditional 
religious experience, which is cons- in the consuming of ayahuasca. They all saw the same serpent and it guides you and protects you as it shows you the truth about the universe, which for many folks, it's always the sort of description of a very much like matrixy uh dimensional world um and that everything that we know is made up of all of this synchronized information um and it's beautiful apparently and it's just the ultimate expression of truth and it's all energy you know and essentially that's what people see and they have this feeling of just euphoria and peace when you undergo this conscious experience but for most folks that just go to church and you just pray and you do you know the regular stuff you're you're not necessarily having those types of um, enlightened experiences usually in most monotheistic religions those types of experiences are typically reserved for the priest you know usually it's the priest that is speaking to god it's the priest that is giving the interpretations from the source realm um to the masses it's very rarely the masses themselves undergoing these deep deep spiritual experiences and for me at least there's a lot to be that i think i gained from understanding and hearing about the world in this way because at least for me it makes me better understand that the world that I see is not the world that it is. And physics has shown that on many, many occasions. You know, I sometimes use the example that pink is not a real color and that your brain invented the color pink because it didn't know what to do with that information. And for me, that's kind of silly, but it's also kind of like mind blowing that your brain is able to sort of create things that don't actually exist just so that you're able to survive in this world. But then it makes me really wonder what is it about our consciousness about our biology that allows us to have this level of abstraction where we can have a conscious experience and what is it about our body that allows us to be a vehicle to have a conscious experience and that's really what i'm trying to understand now and a lot of that is a lot of inner work because i have to understand well first of all as a human what makes me a human what is it that makes me me you know what is it that I know are things that give me energy that actually are this they're they're fueling me where and you can I feel like you can feel it because there are things that you do that when you do them you just feel super energized you're pumped you're ready for the day you're ready to kick ass and then there's other things that you do that just drain the shit out of you and by the end of it you're just fucking fed up and you just want to sit down and watch tv and you don't want to do shit And a lot of that, I think, is not just in what kind of actions you are, you know, how you spend your day. But I do think a lot of it also ties to the environment that you're in, the food that you put in your body, the kinds of people that you surround yourself with, what you listen to, everything in your environment, everything that your senses can feel, they manifest the reality that you're in. And so for me, I want to create the reality that allows me to move towards that highest self that I see for myself and that is essentially for me like the process of manifesting like how do you get to create the things and the goals and bring about the achievements that you want to have in your life how do you take it from just sort of this energetic thought that is up in your head and actually bring it into the world so you can feel it and touch it and hold it or you can see it or other people can see it how do you bring that into the world and as part of your spiritual practice i think when you do inner work and you find out about yourself and you realize like what are your fears what are your concerns what are your limiting beliefs and really understanding and having that deep self-awareness like are you representing yourself the way that are you being your best advocate essentially are you actually holding yourself to the standard so you can accomplish the goals and you have to be brutally honest with yourself do you even believe that you're able to accomplish these goals in the first place or do you just think like do you have a deep fear of success and 
for me, spirituality is not always about being cute and like glowing and having like breakthroughs. It's also really doing the work to understand who you are, what makes you tick, what are the things that give you energy? How do you like to be rewarded? How do you not like to be rewarded? What are, like when you have goals, understanding what is the actual motivation behind these goals? Where is it really, really rooted? And that takes time. It it takes time because at least being my age, I'm young, you know, so I, there's still a lot that I have yet to experience in life. And so there's a lot that I don't know. And so what I'm offering you now is the truth as I know it today. And that could change, you know, tomorrow, if I have new information that makes me an even better or more aware or yeah, more in the know than I was right now. But it's important that you use like for me at least I use my meditative practice as as a moment to really do inner reflection and to really see how I feel and to understand my emotions better and my triggers better because I think for a lot of people we have a mindset that we're just so used to like we look at the world this way every day we wake up and we look at the world a certain way and a lot of that is largely based on our belief system there's a routine of thoughts that your brain echoes in your head every day and those thoughts whether you realize them or not shape your reality they shape how you look at yourself and how you treat yourself and as a result how other people treat you and if you're not even aware of these thoughts and these limiting beliefs, there's no way you can break them because you're not even aware that they're there. You're just moving throughout life, just unaware that you have these limiting beliefs. So it's like in any, you know, rehabilitation program, you have to have acceptance before you can even do any work to fix the problem. And it sometimes takes time because you're not always going to see the things that trigger you all the time. You could have stuff that it you only ever it'll only ever come up once in your life. But if you're not in a position of self-awareness where you're constantly trying to observe yourself and observe who you are, when you are triggered and you experience anger, but you're so consumed in the experience of anger that you miss out on the fact that you were even angry and like how the anger manifested itself into your being and how it shows itself physically, like what are the physical symptoms of your anger? It can be hard to not let that anger consume you and instead look you know have the control to be like well this thing is pissing me off but instead of me getting pissed off and wasting my energy that way i'm not gonna let this piss me off i'm gonna recognize that this does piss me off but now i'm gonna use that recognition to now redirect my focus somewhere else and i think that is a huge huge deal and being able to do that like it might seem small but it's incredibly powerful to retraining your mindset so that you can adopt beliefs that are in alignment with your highest version of yourself and for me manifesting is when you have a thought that thought leads to feeling and that feeling leads to an emotion and that emotion can lead to inspired action and that is how you manifest things because you can have an idea a very great vision of how you want the, your life to be you know like i have a incredible vision of where i want to be you know and it can seem so elusive how in the hell are you even going to get there how are you going to make that a reality but to me manifesting is not necessarily about knowing the how it's just having the perspective and the mindset to know where you're trying to go and then using that to create inspired action and then using that action to actually take steps to get you towards that goal because as much as you know classic religions talk about miracles and how shit's just gonna fucking happen for you it's 2021 boo boo you're gonna have to get your hands dirty in creating this life that you want for yourself and to me my spiritual practice is about creating a lifestyle for myself where i feel empowered to go about and be the change that i want to be in the fucking world and for me like if i have a belief system that makes me feel like i'm just some oppressed tool for other people's enjoyment and i have to be burdened by this belief that if i 
lie i'm somehow going to be burned in the fiery pits of hell like that doesn't really help me necessarily be a good person you know using fear doesn't necessarily make me a loving person and for me i just i believe everyone is different and everyone has the right to have their own interpretation to how the world works but all that matters is that i'm in alignment with love i actually want to do something of value and have a positive impact in the world because it, it's easy i think when you go down a spiritual path you easily recognize that all of these ideas that humans create in our world are all ideas that are man-made so what i mean by that is like you'll realize like time is a human construct you know as much as we experience time you know actually inventing the movement of time creating the calendar these were all things that humans invented you know it's interesting how these ideas that we're so used to you know the ideas of countries and borders and races and religions how they create division um, amongst us but i feel like in my spiritual path it has shown me that all of those borders all of those labels all of those walls that we think exist are all facades they're all masks they're all distractions from the truth which is that we're all the same and we're all connected and we are all manifestations of the universe all of us from the ants that crawl up the trees to the big ass whales that sail through the seas and for me it's like the trees don't know the difference between american soil and canadian soil like the ocean doesn't know the difference between the indian ocean and the being c like it's human ideas that plague this world and i think it can be easy to think that our ideas are fact our ideas are truth but in fact truth there is no absolute because at the end of the day like there's not like an someone that's going to come down from the heavens and tell us jack you were right and sarah you were wrong like at the end of the day we're all going to have to decide for ourselves how we want to live in this world. And unfortunately, because a lot of this is human driven, like what we decide to be good and bad is all up to us. We make those decisions every day. And it's easy in a world that has no intrinsic meaning to create meaning. You know, it's, it's very much a human thing that we were able to create purpose in a world that is purposeless, or at least to us and our understanding of it, it's purposeless. Like, why did the universe have to create the earth? It didn't have to, it just did. And when it destroys the earth, we won't know why it did that either. It just is gonna happen. And I think as much as I can seem like we have absolutely no control over anything, it shows you that you know at the end of the day what is most important which is i think what we forget is how much of a miracle it is that we all exist how much of a miracle it is that we all exist in this timeline and how much gratitude we should have for each other because we are honestly alone on this earth like as much until we find some other aliens out there that can somehow engage with us planet earth and everything on it is all we've got and we should really you know remember how special that is because this is it like there's only what seven billion of us like this is it guys like we are all we've got and we should remember that we are more alike than we are different we all bleed red we all are made up of the same fucking vibrating particles okay like it makes no difference when we all die we will all be forgotten at some point in time, you know? And I think as much as like the absence of meaning can seem very, very daunting because it's like, well, then why do anything? You know, why why even do anything? Like why have goals when none of them are gonna matter in a billion years, you know, to anybody? Like I think what 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 matters is the fact that you can have value in the lives of the people around you today. Like to me, what makes me get up out of bed every day and not be like, well, fuck it. Like none of this shit matters anyway. So who cares? I remember that. Well, I can have a positive impact in someone's life today that has, I believe, an impact in the global just feeling of positivity and good that's in the universe. And 
like I said, there's originally like these two archetypes. There's you either go down the path of love and exploration and trying to build something positive and trying to align that with your truth and being as vulnerably honest as you can be in that pursuit of that truth. Or you can just say fuck it and, and you know, just be miserable until the day you croak but i think between the two there's one that's obviously a little bit more enjoyable than the other and it's like while we have this life while we can have these experiences while we can be there for one another through these moments especially because life is not always beautiful it's not always easy it's not always you know rainbow and sunshine and i don't think it's supposed to be i think we're supposed to experience the good and the bad because without the bad how do you have appreciation for the good and in order to get through those times in order to get through it for me we need support and for me any spiritual practice is always better when you have a fantastic support system and i think that's what we can all be for each other is as we are trying to explore this life and make sense of it all to be a mentor or aid or ally for each other because as ram das says we are all walking each other home and for me it's like why wouldn't i help my sister out you know like especially when you're me and i'm you because we're all the same like and we are all made up of the same energy that flows through the entire universe and when we die we're gonna go back to that same energy for me it seems silly to not help you know it seems silly to not be there for my fellow human for my fellow animal for my fellow being because to me it's all about what we do for each other like i really do believe when you are in pursuit or service of others like that's when you feel fantastic that's why i think why giving back feels so fucking good is because i think that's just naturally what we're supposed to do but again like it, it's, it's hard in this world where there's so many distractions to figure out meaning and understanding your purpose and understanding how do you deal with all the complex emotions and thoughts that go through you every second of every day and it's so hard that it can be easy to just want to numb it all and to just not have to think about it but because we're alive we unfortunately have to make a decision as to how we want to live this life like it's either you do nothing and you starve or you fight and in that fight you can make something really beautiful and i think that's what we're all looking for i think that's what we all long for is to find our place and to have something worth fighting for and for me like spirituality is my journey um in understanding the world around me and to find what i want to fight for and hopefully in doing that like i would be telling my truth and hopefully that can align with other folks but religion is a very tricky thing and i think it's always changing you know i think because how we understand the world around us i think is different for every person and so how we understand our reason for being is going to be different for every person but i think if you have these hard conversations about what we believe and why we think we're here and how do we deal with those hard moments like death i think the world would be a much nicer place than it already is because i feel like people would not feel like they're alone and they would realize like we are all here for you you know like we all want the best for you and i think like the reason why humans can't survive alone is because we're supposed to have a community i think it's like literally a part of our biology which means you know ordained by the universe but i know for some people they're like harsha you're just speaking bullshit but this is my truth this is really what i believe and for me like it allows me to be a good person it allows me to ask fantastic questions about the world and maybe i'm completely wrong and really we're just in some weird matrix game that some alien kid is playing and we're just an ai projection that's an algorithm that creates different conscious experiences and we don't know any better but until i have new information to tell me otherwise this is what i've got and as i go through each day i hope to try to learn more to so that i can better understand the world around me but as it is i think it's pretty fucking dope and for me it, it makes me 
just very, very grateful to be alive because I know how much of a miracle it is to exist. And the fact that I can be a manifestation of God and I'm a manifestation of the universe, like how do you not feel more empowered? And I think each of us, it's important to find what makes you feel good, what gives you energy, because when you have energy, then you can share that with others. And I think we can all, you know, work to just make this world more tolerant more open-minded more loving and just overall i think a place where we each want to exist but again we we all have a role to play in that and i believe because we are all beings we all have this sense of longing to belong and to fit in and to love and to be supported and i think if we just loved harder if we loved so hard that we were broke our little hearts open to the point where we were just truthfully honest the world would be a lot better but i think there's a lot of healing that needs to go on i think a lot of people need to wake up from the reality that they're in and realize like you have control over your life and the world as it is not how it is and to kind of just wake the fuck up and see through the bullshit and to see like hey like we are a part of a constantly dynamically changing world and we each have the power to manifest our greatest dreams in this world but you gotta wake up first you gotta wake up first Thanks for listening to this episode of The Chatterbox. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to show your support by subscribing to this podcast and leaving us a review. Follow us on Instagram at the.chatterbox for teasers and updates.